Today, I would like to discuss perception, specifically how when we look at certain pictures, what we see is not what's there. My wife and I visited Chicago a few summers ago. One morning, we walked from our hotel towards Lake Michigan, past the Honorable Richard J. Daley Plaza and the Picasso, headed to the Art Institute of Chicago. It's a fabulous museum with a diverse collection and spacious, well-organized galleries. When you walk into Gallery 240 in the Impressionist area on the second floor, you are greeted by a stunning painting by Georges Seurat, all alone taking up one wall. It is instantly recognizable for its colors, subject matter, and most importantly, Seurat's technique. A Sunday on La Grand Jatte shows people relaxing on the banks of an island in the River Seine in Paris, some sitting, some standing, some with umbrellas for the sun. The painting is rather large, just over two meters by three meters. When you observe the painting from about three meters away, you see the lively colors and intended detail of the enigmatic scene circa 1884. But when you get closer, say half a meter away, you see something else. The picture is composed of dots or tiny distinct touches or strokes of paint. Seurat's technique came to be known as pointillism after an art critic described it as pointure au point or painting by dots. Seurat wanted to move away from traditional impressionist techniques and use a process that was more mathematical. He studied French chemist Michel Eugène Chevrel's work on complementary colors and incorporated these ideas into his paintings as an early adopter of color science. The optical property of simultaneous contrast, where the colors and shades we perceive depend on their surroundings, was used by Seurat and other well-known painters, including Van Gogh, to create vibrant colors on their canvases. The technique works because of the remarkable properties of the human visual system, a system that has evolved to render what we perceive in our minds in such a way as to maximize usefulness. At three meters away, the human eye cannot form an image that clearly distinguishes or resolves the individual points, dots, or brush marks in the painting. The most important thing our visual system does is not fight for the detail anymore, but it creates an accurate spatial average of what is there, preserving the colors and tones. Seurat exploits that to create the spectacular image we see three meters away. The 1986 movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, has a scene with Cameron standing in front of the painting, staring at the face of the little girl in white. The scene cuts back and forth between Cameron's surprised gaze and a progressively zoomed in view of the girl's face until he realizes her face is just dots and that what you see is not what's there. But what is there is calculated, scientific, and designed to affect your perception in specific ways. Moving on to the modern era, here's another picture. It shows packages in a grocery store, and I want to ask, what does this have in common with a Sunday on La Grand Jatte? The thing they have in common is the dots. All the packages on the shelves are printed, and most of them reproduce the images of the products inside. Printing uses a similar approach to pointillism, to create images that appear real to the human visual system. That method is called halftone screening, and the result is multicolor patterns of dots that you never see. Pointillism and halftone screening for printing were developed at about the same time, in the late 19th century, but independently. The halftone dots used to create images are typically four colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black and are arrayed in carefully calculated shapes on a small grid, too small to see with the naked eye. Images on packages or publications are meant to be viewed about a half a meter away, so the dots are much smaller than the strokes in Seurat's paintings. But you can see them with a simple magnifier or carefully take a picture in focus as close as possible with your smartphone, usually about five to six inches away. Zoom in on that picture and you will see the halftone dots. I'm showing you printing on packaging because that's the business that I'm in. We make printing plates for printing in the process called flexography, which is used almost exclusively for printing packaging. It is essentially a productive, high-tech rotary version of a rubber stamp in that the plate, like this one, has raised relief features that are inked in print. But unlike any rubber stamp that you may have seen, 
These plates have tiny accurate features to print those halftone dots as small as 20 microns and precisely positioned within two microns. That means if we took a typical one meter wide printing plate and scaled it up to the size of a football field, the printing features would be as small as two millimeters and accurately positioned to a fifth of a millimeter on that field. We are responsible for the materials and the technology to create that printing plate and the high quality halftone dot printing capability. Think about your grocery store. Today, roughly half of the packaging in your grocery store is printed with flexography. Everything in the snack food aisle, frozen food bags, meat, cheese, produce, and pasta packages, anything packaged in a flexible film, soda cartons, labels on personal care products, etc. But that was not always the case. Flexography used to have a much smaller share of the package printing market. I was fortunate enough to take part in a technical development that dramatically improved the printed quality of flexography, at the same time lowering the cost and complexity. The process to create the printing features on the plates was decades old and relied on special films created separately to be carefully positioned in contact on the plates. We found a way to eliminate the separate films by moving that function into our plate. This improved quality, reduced complexity, and created those tiny dots in a more controlled and precise way. This made flexography more competitive and ushered in a shift to its use as the dominant printing technology for packaging. Printed packaging is important to consumer product companies who are competing for your business on the grocery store shelves. Through market research, these companies understand that the appearance of the package its visual appeal plays a significant role in consumer choice. The research shows that people compare items on grocery store shelves and only take a few seconds to make a buying decision. Brand owners want their packages to be noticed, to stand out with vibrant, clear, detailed images and a wide range of color. The printed dots are responsible for all of those things. So remember this the next time you are shopping in the grocery store. The printing, on the packaging, on the shelves, is a battleground for your attention waged by the consumer product companies. DuPont has a lot to do with what you perceive, and what you see is not what's there.